There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello Booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a review of this biography, The Quest for Queen Mary by James Pope Hennessy, edited by Hugo Vickers. This was published in late 2018 and I read it in January this year, a buddy read with my dear friend and fellow obsessive royal groupie, Leah from Calgary. I loved this with all my heart. It was an exuberant five-star read. I'm interested in the modern royal family. I don't care about the politics of it, I'm not particularly a monarchist, but I love reading about their lives and their scandals and whatnot. And Queen Mary, uh, ostensibly, was one of the more boring members of the family. So if you don't know, she is the paternal grandmother of the present Queen, Elizabeth II. And she was the consort of King George V, who reigned from 1910 to 1935. She lived almost 20 years past that. She lived through the uh, short-lived reign of her eldest son, who became very briefly Edward VIII, and he abdicated, and then her second son, eldest son became George the Sixth, and she lived a year after he died. So he, she lived almost a, a year into her granddaughter, Queen Elizabeth II's reign. James Pope Hennessy was commissioned by the royal family to write an authorized biography. And so he was given access to all the royals all over Europe and in England and all the ladies-in-waiting and this and that. And he wrote what, by all accounts, and that it's, that's not this book. This is the, the book about that book. I think it was just called Queen Mary A Life, and it was published around 1960. James Pope Hennessy at that time, in the late 1950s, was a young, I guess, closeted gay man and had uh, written some... Uh, biographies that were very well received and so he was approached to write the Queen Mary's biography. He wasn't too interested in the topic at first but he got more and more into it and he wrote what by all accounts is a masterful biography. This 2018 publication is all of the juicy bits that he didn't put into that 1959 biography. He wrote elegant beautifully written notes on every person he met, royal or royal servant or otherwise, and those are what has been published here, edited by another royal biographer, Hugo Vickers. James Pope Hennessy died, he was murdered in 1974, he wasn't that old, maybe in his 50s, and the official account of that was that it was a robbery, but there was some kind of a gay, under dark undertone to the robbery as well. But these are all the juicy bits, and I loved all the gossip in here, but what I didn't expect to love as much as I did was James Pope Hennessy's writing. It's just stunning. I haven't read anything by him until I encountered this book, and I want to read everything he's ever written, or almost, because I just love the writing. It is organized. The chapters are the people that he interviewed, so it starts with one of his her ladies-in-waiting and goes through the King and Queen of Sweden, and the Dowager Duchess of Devonshire, and Edward and Wallace in Paris, and so on and so on. And there are 31 chapters. Most of the chapters he wrote with such a novelistic flair that you just feel transported into that world and eavesdropping on these famous or not so famous people telling what they knew or what they felt they could tell him about Queen Mary's life. And she became all the more fascinating to me as I read through it. But really, you don't have to care too much about Queen Mary. I'd say you have to be kind of interested in the royal family of this era, or it wouldn't be a book for you. But I think pretty much anybody who likes reading historical biography or history will just fall in love with Pope Hennessy's writing. So... I learned lots of stuff about her. Apparently, it was rumored she had a love affair with her, with her father-in-law's brother-in-law, King Edward VII's brother-in-law. And of course, I shouldn't say of course, but uh, many of you might know that she was engaged to be married to the Duke of Clarence, who was the eldest son of Edward and Alexandra, so that she would become queen. But he died months, just a few months after they became engaged, and within several, only a few months after that, she became engaged to the next prince in line and became Queen Mary 
with George V. There's lots of gossip about all that in here. Prince Eddie, the Duke of Clarence, was rumored to be gay or bisexual and apparently died of syphilis. And the death scene is the room in the palace where he died and all of that. He visits, Pope Hennessy visits that room and he gets all the various versions of that story and it just comes to life. She doesn't sound that boring now, does she? But really, what I took from this book, far more than all the wonderful gossip that I got, because that kind of royal gossip, it goes in one ear and out the other. So I, I could read this in five years and it would all be new to me. But the way he writes, the way he captures character and sets a scene, I wish the hell he'd been a novelist. But the fact that he didn't write novels and wrote biographies gives me a whole new appreciation of what might be possible in a biography. So I'm just going to end. I want this to be a really short review. But I just want to give you a sample of his writing. So this is the chapter about the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester. The Duke of Gloucester was another younger son of Queen Mary and uh, his wife. And they were characters. And he was really nervous to go and spend the weekend at their place. And, and it's all written in moment-by-moment -moment detail. And I just want to show you how he captures... There's a wonderful scene that I'm not going to read you about when he first meets the Duchess and she takes him out into the garden and asks him to help her and she, he quickly realizes because he's so sharp about just capturing and understanding somebody's character at first blush that this is her way of calming herself down because she's a shy person and calming him down. But here is his impressions of the Duke who he quite likes. Now, the Duke of Gloucester, nobody remembers, I don't think, anymore, but once you hear this passage, I don't think you'll soon forget the way that Pope Hennessy captures him. Duke of Gloucester is also, his name is Henry, so Prince Henry. Prince Henry is one of the finest and most authentic specimens of the race available for study today. He is tall and bulky, and his head is wonderfully Hanoverian flat at the back and rising to the great pineapple point of William IV. He has protruding Guelph eyes. I could hardly take my eyes off him for the 48 hours I was there. He looked now like his father, now slightly like the Duke of Teck, occasional glimpses even of Queen Mary. He is an immensely kind, potentially irritable man whose chief aim in life is to laugh. This, as is well known, he does in his own manner. A hysterical piglet squeal which becomes uncontrollable and which I found very infectious. His face is all creased up with past laughter and hoping for future laughter. You could even say his laugh is orgasmic. So much pleasure does he get from it. So sudden and enjoyable does it seem. Well, any time that I am called upon to remember the Duke of Gloucester, I will remember his laugh at his uh, joy de vivre. There's many such characters captured and many such moments and descriptions of the palaces and stuff, and James Pope Hennessy didn't care very much for most of the royal palaces, and he lets you know it. And almost all of this gossipy and opinionated stuff apparently didn't make it into the official biography, but it's all collected here in immensely readable chapters that are just slice of royal life and slices of insight into the mind of a genius biographer. I absolutely loved it. The last thing I'll say is, much more than Queen Mary herself, this biography deepened my fascination with her mother, Princess Mary Adelaide, the Duchess of Teck, who was known as Fat Mary because she was obese. And she had the most wonderful personality. She was always late. She was always poor. Queen Victoria had kept having to give her handouts and this and that. But she just was kind, and everybody loved her, and I, Lee and I are going to read a biography of her next, because Queen Mary was so embarrassed by her larger-than-life, dramatic, drama queen, always poor, too loud-voiced, kind of overly talkative mother, that she controlled herself so tightly that she was a bore in many ways. So I'm, next step, the Duchess of Tech. In the meantime... If any of this stuff I've just talked about or read to you sounds good, check this biography out. The Quest for Queen Mary by James Pope Hennessy. Thanks for watching.